Well, folks, we're back with another Dev Diary, and this is a good one. A really good one. Now, the first half or three quarters, actually, of this Dev Diary focus on the artwork, how they make it, what the timelines on these things is, what the decision making is. And honestly, I cannot do this justice in my videos. My shitty little videos do nothing for just how much work goes into the Hearts of Iron 4 artwork, and I don't want to ruin it, please check out the dev diary. I've left the link down in the description. Check it out for yourselves. It's incredibly impressive just how much work goes into the artwork. What I can address with my shitty little videos are the achievements for Buy Blood Alone, and these look pretty good. So let's get started at the top. Let's start with a Swiss achievement and you get a canton, everybody gets a canton, as Switzerland have 24 states. Um, This might be very easy or slightly difficult, it's going to depend on how well the Swiss mechanics work, I haven't gone hands on with them yet, but I don't think this is going to be that much of an issue. Then we've got I'm not locked in here with you, as Switzerland declare war on Germany and win, knowing the AI this won't be all that difficult either. Swiss cheese as Switzerland annex five states that are not contiguous with each other or Switzerland. So basically create border gore. We can do that. We can definitely do that. You shall not pass as Switzerland win a defensive war without ever losing the Western Swiss Alps, Eastern Swiss Alps or Ticino. Uh, I mean, those are all mountains. If you lose the mountains that easily as Switzerland, you probably don't deserve this achievement anyway. I don't I don't think this is going to be all that difficult either. Like so far, so good. The lion that roared as Ethiopia without being in a faction forced the Italians to make peace. Again, uh, honestly, not that difficult, but I don't know what they mean by this because this is just a description. I don't know what the events or the, the text for the, the achievement script will be. So this could be as easily as forcing the Italians to offer a white peace. Or does this mean that you need to take a certain focus that requires you to push the Italians out of your land? Or does this mean you need to invade Italy as Ethiopia, never accept a white peace event and destroy them that way? I don't know. I don't think it's going to be all that difficult if it's just going to revolve around the achievement. Uh, sorry, the focuses or the white peace events. I Honestly, not that difficult. And then we get to the Lion King as Haile Selassie. Declare yourself King of Kings and control Kenya and Tanzania. This one could be difficult because declaring yourself King of Kings means you keep Haile Selassie around while you fight Italy. So if you lose, you lose and it's over. Uh, and controlling Kenya and Tanzania means fighting the Allies. And if you're going to fight the allies, you'll be completely isolated and on your own. This might actually be a difficult one. So we only need to control it. So eh, we'll see. This time for Africa, as Ethiopia found the African Union and have it encompass at least 13 different countries with capitals in Africa. So basically, as Ethiopia, go communist, go down the focus tree, join the common turn, kick the allies around and go ham on puppets. Oh, no, no, not join the common turn. Just flip communist, use Soviet help, probably, to kick the allies ar around in Africa and make a bunch of puppet puppets there, I guess? Un unless they require you to use the mechanics that I haven't tried yet, but if it works like Crusader Kings 2, that's gonna be ass. Uh, if it's just defeat the allies and set up a bunch of puppet regimes in Africa, I think that's gonna be feasible. Crusader Kings 4 always needed Crusader Kings to take Jerusalem as Ethiopia and move the capital there. Why do I always have to fight the allies? I hate having to fight the allies because they're so annoying. The downside of all of these Ethiopian achievements is you're gonna fight the allies. They're the only credible enemy you have near you after you defeated Italy. And the downside with the allies is by the time you fight them, they are on a war footing. They're mobilizing. They have a ton of troops. They have large navies and large air forces. And then you think, oh, but they're fighting Germany. They're not. They're not fighting Germany. Not until 1942, 1943, 1944, when they actually start making D-Day landings. Until then, they're just building up troops because they have no land border with the Germans. They might be fighting it out with the Italians, but the Italians always lose relatively quickly, or they just commit a small amount of troops there because it's Northern Italy. Uh, sorry, it's Northern Africa. There's not a whole lot going on there, which means the full might of the allies is going to be turned on you as shitty little Ethiopia on your own. You're going to fight the full alliance on a war footing 
hundreds of British divisions are going to flood in. American divisions are going to flood in. You'll get zero trade done because the mighty navies of the world will sink every single convoy you built. You will fight under red air constantly. It is going to be ass. Simple as that. It will be ass. You will not even be able to make regular guns because there is no steel in Africa and you won't be able to trade for any. So not something I'm looking forward to. Anyway, rant over. Let's continue. The Red Sea as Ethiopia go communist and take all the states that border the Red Sea. Eh, with Soviet help, I guess that might actually not be that difficult depending on how you handle the game. Again, fight the allies. Why not? Holy Roman and an empire as the Pope restore Rome. Well, I know what my first achievement run is going to be. I want that one. I absolutely want that one. Pizza time as Italy occupy New York, Chicago and Hawaii. Oh no, we'll have to fight the USA. I don't want to fight the USA. It's always such a nightmare <sighs> but i guess it gives you a reason to keep playing past 1942 i suppose unless you fight the usa early it might be easier i don't know man I'm it look it's funny but i don't want to fight the usa late game i just don't such a drag it's just a slog Ah, collect all the Romes as Italy continue holding on to Rome and gain the second and third Rome. So Istanbul and Moscow. I mean, that's relatively easily. Easily combine that with uh, a, 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 a Rome, Roman Empire run, I guess. Nothing personal. Adolf as Italy take Austria before the Anschluss and never enter a faction with fascist, fascist Germany before 1945. I think that one's going to be easy depending on uh, how you handle Austria because invading Austria is not as easy as it sounds with the way they've redesigned the zones and the impassable terrain. You're fighting through a very narrow bottleneck filled to the brim with mountains and infantry. So uh, still, it should be should be relatively easy. As com Not today, as communist Italy save Gramsci from the brink of death, make him the leader of Italy and form the Italian National Union. Uh, this is going to be a focus tree thing, I guess. Flip flip communist as Italy. I don't know if Gramsci dying is some sort of event chain you need to avoid or you need to rush. No idea. It's going to depend on what it means to save him from the brink of death. This time it will stick as any allied nation in a faction with democratic Britain enforce a peace deal on Germany that disarms the Rhineland and makes it a demilitarized zone. Eh, we can do that. I guess we'll probably be fighting the French tooth and nail over the amount of war score and that province. But I, I guess this won't be that difficult. Just play a historical game, play France and win. Uh, when Germany declares on you, you'll have all the war participation you need. Buy beer alone as Germany control Budweiser, Tsingtao and Guinness directly or through a faction member. I mean, Budweiser, um, this Budovic, that's in Czechia, so you get that anyway. Tsingtao, you'll have to fight the Chinese or the Japanese over it, which is a bit of a nuisance. And Guinness, well, just invade Ireland. Not that difficult. I think this one's going to be relatively easy. Might be a problem having to deal with Japan, but honestly, Japan's not that impressive. By merit alone, promote a unit commander to a general and reach max level. This is going to be one of those grindy achievements. I don't like these. Honestly, it's not going to be difficult. It's just going to be a matter of keeping a war going forever where you grind and grind and grind a single general or several generals. Not difficult, just a nuisance to get. And then snakes on a plane as Brazil capture Rome with paratroopers. This one might actually be a little difficult because the AI garrisons its victory points pretty well now. Plus they are reworking how paratroopers are going to be used. So it might not be as easy as it sounds. Of course, we'll find a way. We'll find a way to make it easy. But uh, it's a nice little nod to the Brazilian contribution to the war in Italy. So I like that. I, I just don't know how easy or or difficult is going to be. I haven't gone hands on with uh, with the new stuff. So all in all, most of these achievements look reasonably easy to do. I am absolutely dreading all these Ethiopian ones that require me to fight the allies. I hate fighting the allies, especially as Ethiopia, man, you're on your own. You have no resources, you have no factories, you have no manpower, and you're fighting the most powerful states in the world without even being able to trade or get lend 
friendlies because you're that isolated, which annoys me. It annoys me terribly. Other than that, I am looking forward to these achievements. Anyway, uh, I'd recommend you check out the dev diary. I'll leave a link down in the description below and really, really look at the stuff about the artwork. It's very impressive.